It's quarter till, class is starting. Let's get going, we have a lot to cover today. Everyone can find a seat. Good afternoon, welcome to week three of Terra Firma. How are we doing? Are we all here? How's it going? Good. <laughs> Thank you. We're into the semester now, so hopefully you feel like you're getting into the swing of things. All right, just as we're getting started here, um, we're going to have uh, our topic today has a lot to do with uh, the topics of virtue and vocation. So this is going to build on some of the discussions we've already been having. Um, starting with uh, the conversation that you all were able to have with Jason Clayton during orientation week when you moved in. Um, also building on the strengths material that you covered during orientation week and during last week's session. Um, so again, just kind of wanting to draw your attention, please notice the fact that what we're doing today is not just an isolated topic, but it's built on all of these things that we've already been talking about. So. Um, before we get started on our main topic, we have another student presenter here today to talk to us about an important uh, resource that we have on campus. Most of you probably are already aware that it is necessary for you as new students to meet with your academic advisor before you can register for your spring semester classes. Now I realize it might sound like we barely started this semester, why are we already talking about next semester's classes? Uh, I'm sorry to say it's going to come up much faster than we think. So, um, Mackenzie is going to come on up. Do you want to come on up and get started? Mackenzie is one of our Life Path peer advisors on campus. This is a group of student leaders who are focused on helping our students connect to various academic divisions and programs, also help you out with connecting with our Career and Life Calling Office, with some of the services for the Center for Student Success, and so they're basically just a really great group of student leaders for you to get to know. So you'll meet several of them throughout this semester. This is Mackenzie, she's a sophomore. Um, business management major and comm minor. So she's going to spend a couple of minutes talking with you, showing you very specifically how you need to sign up for your advising appointment in Handshake. I know many of you have done this because I've been seeing you come in for advising appointments and that's great. So if you've already done it, you can hang with us for, here, uh, for a few minutes. But for those of you who haven't, You'll want to pay very close attention to this. It's very important. You will absolutely need to do this before you can register for spring semester classes. So give, please give your attention to Mackenzie. She's going to show you um, on the screens how you can follow along. If you have your computer, you're welcome to get it out. Click along while we're going here. That's really fine. Um, and then I'll come back after this and talk uh, about our next speaker. Yep. Thank you so much, Shannon, for that wonderful introduction. Um, so I'm here today, as she said, to talk to you about Handshake. There's three specific things that I'm going to talk to you about. One, specifically how to make an appointment with your academic advisor. Two, about the resources that are available to you on Handshake, like the different files and stuff that you can read through. And three, just how to find a job using, re um, using Handshake, um, how to find a job on campus, and how to find a job off campus. So to begin, um, for those of you, like she said, if you have your computers, feel free to come out, um, bring them out, log into your handshake, and follow along. Um, to make an appointment, you go up to this Career Center tab and you go the, into the drop down menu. Um, you're going to click Appointments, and then it'll bring you to this screen right here. So, of course, you know, click the big blue button <laughs> that says Schedule a New Appointment, um, and that will bring you to this page. For right now, just for setting up your academic advising um, with your academic advisors, you're just going to select the academic advising tab. In the future, if you need to meet with an academic advisor or a life path peer advisor for like internship, job search, any of those other categories up there, you can select that. For this one, of course, we're going to select academic advising. The next step is to pick your academic advisor. So that is based on your last name. If your last name is A through K, you pick Jennifer Real, and if your last name is L through Z, you're gonna pick Kiera Conway. Um, also, Jessica Perry told me that she really enjoys meeting with the undecided students, so if you are an undecided major and you wanna meet with her, she would really appreciate that. 
Um, and then from there, you can just pick a day. You can click these arrows and go back and forth between which weeks. Um, but once you pick a day, um, you come here, and the times that are available for the specific academic advisors are below. So if you want to do Jennifer Real, 2 o'clock to 2.50, you click on it, it'll bring you to this page. Um, and then right here for this thing, you can probably just put academic advising for freshmen. But if you have any specific questions like, I don't know what major I am, I need help with that, or I don't really know which classes to take when, you can put those in there so that when they meet with you, they have a more specified, like they can prep to meet with you so they have those answers for you. Um, and then you can just click request. Actually, you have to fill that out. Um, we're just gonna. And request. And then it brings you to this um, screen. It says the appointment was successfully um, requested. And then at any point, if you feel like, oh, I can't do that anymore, you have to cancel it, of course, you can just come in and click cancel appointment and then give another reason that you want to cancel it. Um, so next on the list is the resources that are available to you on Handshake. You're going to go back into that drop down, click on the resources, and then it'll bring you to this page. On this page for you guys, there's an articles about how to do resumes and cover letters, how to do an internship, how to do interviewing. Um, one that's very important to the LifePath Peer Advisors is this one. Um, and all of them are set up in the same way, so you can just click on this attachment right here, um, and it'll download it into your computer. And the list of peer advisors is really nice because it just gives you a list of everyone that's available, their contact information and everything. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of other stuff on there as well um, regarding lots of different topics. And then next is how to apply for a job. So to apply for the job, you're going to click on the job tab. And then it, it'll bring you to this screen. And on the left side of the screen is where you can kind of insert all of your like um, requests or preferences. So in like the keyword, if you want a nursing job, a management job, sports job, anything like that, if you type it in there, it'll bring up those specific jobs to you. And of course, you can enter a location. Um, and then currently, the screen is not loading. But there are other options, such as um, you can request an on-campus job, on-campus on interviewing, um, different locations for volunteering, if you're specifically looking for that, or an internship. Um, so you can search other things like that. And there's also below, you can search stuff for your specific major, um, different things like that. But it's all right there. It's very easy to navigate. I'm very sorry that it's not loading properly right now to show you. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to schedule an appointment with any of your LifePath peer advisors or academic advisors. I'm sure that they'd be willing to help you in navigating Handshake. Um, and please just use it because it's a great resource that Cornerstone has provided for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good, uh, good information there. Um, so I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to explain something. Um, I mentioned how important it is for you all to sign up for your academic advising appointment. Uh, in order to help facilitate that or help motivate you to that process, um, anyone, any student who apply or who signs up through Handshake for an academic advising appointment by this coming Friday at 5 o'clock, so that's September 22nd, 5 p.m., if you've already signed up at that time for your advising appointment, that will include anyone who signs up between now and then and also anyone who has already signed up for an appointment. Um, so if you sign up by Friday and then you actually follow through and go to that meeting that you sign up for, you will be entered into a drawing. Um, Ian and the student development folks are going to uh, sponsor five um, separate prizes that are worth at least at a minimum of $10 each, maybe a gift card. I'm not sure exactly what all of those are going to look like, but Ian promises me he has cool stuff to give away. So uh, we'll, we won't have the drawing for a little bit of time yet because we'll want to make sure that you have time to actually keep those appointments that you make, all right? But again, we're trying to get you to get on this right away. Even if you don't schedule your appointment until the first part of October, that's fine. 
Um, but please sign up for your appointment. Get it scheduled right now this week. Add it into your calendar, to your planner. Put a reminder in your phone so that you remember to show up. All of those important things, all right? So again, anyone who signs up for an advising appointment by 5 p.m. on Friday and then attends that appointment for whenever it is scheduled, you will be entered into this drawing and we will get back with you later this semester with the winners of those prizes, okay? All right, um, moving on to our main uh, speaker for the day. Um, you have all probably remember meeting Jason Clayton at uh, orientation weekend when he spoke with you. But just to give you a little more information, he's got a great uh, intro here that I wanna share with you all of this stuff. So um, Jason Clayton is a positive, positivist, realist, and futurist who is called to help others find, develop, and pursue their purposes within the Great Commission based on their God-given uniqueness. Um, and for those of you who haven't gotten to meet him in person yet, he actually really loves to do those things and is great at it. Um, so Jason is a lover of God's creation and enjoys in spending as much time in the outdoors as possible. New Zealand, Italy, Ireland, Guatemala, and the Sierra Nevadas in California are some of his favorite places. He fulfills his various callings as a husband, father of a five-year-old, church small group leader, Hudsonville City board member, and is thankful to serve professionally as the Dean of Career and Life Calling here at Cornerstone. Jason is excited to be with us here today, and it's uh, to build on his discussion that he started with you a few weeks ago. And so I'm happy to invite him to get up here and get started. He's got some students who are going to help him out as well. Um, so we're excited to hear what he has to say. Thank you. So Mel, Drew, and Dana, if you want to come up now, thanks. Um, we're going to spend a few minutes together. Pumped to be with you. It's been a couple weeks. How are the first few weeks? Yeah? So let's, let's do something real quick, all right? Let's do a stand up real quick and give a clap for Jesus because it's 84 degrees outside in the second half of September. Praise God. So where's Blaze? Where's Blaze, my friend from Southern California? Where's Blaze? Is Blaze in here today? Blaze, how's it feel compared to Southern Cal right now? It feels awesome, right? Welcome home. It's just like Southern Cal. Almost year-round in Grand Rapids. Almost. Almost. So it's good to be with you. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off the other week, okay? Remember what we talked about when uh, we had this thing right here? Remember that? You don't want to lose that thing. Remember, you said, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to use it for the next four years because I'm the class of 2021, and I'm going to graduate on time, and this thing's going to help me, right? So here's a guide to stewarding Cornerstone time well. This is for you, okay? So we'll look at that in a few minutes. But what's really cool, and I don't want to spend a lot of time to take away from, you're going to hear from what we're talking about, virtue and vocation, and what that means here at Cornerstone and how we're committed to help you becoming who God's called you to be intentionally, from these four and their experience. And many of you have them as Terra Firma group leaders, which is pretty awesome. So let's get started, okay? So today, we're talking about life path, right? We already talked about that second day you were here, this intentional approach, purpose-guided academic career planning, right? It's unique to Cornerstone, which is awesome, and we're glad you get to take advantage of that. But we're going to talk about virtue and vocation, revisit the calling idea that we talked about the other week. So, uh, Dr. Pothoven, who just shared with you, uh, shared that I'm a dad. Ah, uh, so humbled to be a dad. That's my little girl. Her name's Saren, meaning serenity or peace. Uh, middle name, Annalise, grace and peace by the oath of God. She's a gift. I want to steward that gift well, okay? She started kindergarten. It brought me to tears, my wife and I, the other week. But we want to help you at Cornerstone understand that calling isn't just your career, Okay, it's a very important part, like we talked about the other week, when we said work is a gift, right? And it helps you reveal your callings. That's why we want to live into this work intentionally, based on who God made you to be uniquely, all right, and what you bring to the world. For Saren, I'm already seeing some things in her. She's creative. She gets bored easily. She's an outdoors girl. She has high emotional intelligence. I'm so thankful for that. Like, she loves on people well. I can already start to see that at five, um, but to look back at what we're talking about for this calling idea, 
Essentially, it's stewardship for Jesus. All that God gives you, your unique talents, gifts, abilities, how he wired you, and the opportunities he gives you, like Cornerstone time. These days, these years of college at Cornerstone, we want to steward them well, right, to honor him and him alone. Because if we're doing it for another reason, it, it doesn't matter, right? We want you to build a life that matters, and it's centered on him. So that's our definition, essentially, of calling or vocation on campus. Faithful stewardship for Christ of one's, your unique, God-given talents and opportunities he gives you through your professional, like career, personal, like as a dad, right? And he's allowed me to be a dad for Saren, and a husband to Carolyn, and, a, and what I do professionally, university administrator and career coach, and at church, based on who I am, I'm on the hospitality team and trying to disciple people a little bit more. I go deeper in small group and do life together. Serving my city, right? The civic life idea, my own community where we live in Hudsonville across town, trying to serve the community. And I love the outdoors. I try to stay active, take care of the body God gave me. I love to kayak and trail run and backpack and those things, right? That's just how God made me, and I've discovered that over the years. We want to help you discover more about you, so you live into that to give to the world what you have to bring for him. Does that make sense? Stewardship. But that takes intentionality and effort on your part. We don't promise me one thing, and you promised me this earlier two weeks ago. Don't waste this time of college. You promised me that again? We we'll revisit that promise, okay? Don't waste it. It'll fly by. It'll absolutely fly by. I promise you. All of a sudden, you're going to be a junior or senior, okay? Um, so don't waste it. Let's make the most of it to prepare for life in general. So one quick way we can look at this whole thing, asking big questions in life, right, is to look at who you are. We talked about that. That's in the book, right, that you have, a guide for you, the Life Path book. So it starts with who you are, this inner call, what God's given you and how do you steward it well. You did focus two this past week for an assignment, right? So hopefully you learned a little bit more interests and, and personality and values and all those things that's unique to you that helps you then meet with your academic advisor and what do I want to study and I think I might want to do this and here's why because of my uniqueness. To, uh, strengths, okay, you did that. What a great lens to look through and what I'm already good at and how do I develop that further. Uh, and your identity in Christ, first and foremost, that'll never change. Like, you are his. Whatever anyone says about you, it doesn't matter because you're his. Okay? And don't forget that. So how do I fulfill what I'm supposed to do? The purpose thing, what's the world need of me? It takes action and effort for me to give and serve, right? This purpose idea. Where do I do it and how do I do it? Well, we'll talk about the virtues here in 30 seconds. Um, but it's all aspects of life. It's not just work and career. And then the big one that we want to help you with is an intentional plan, okay? It's going to be different for each and every one of you. We want, we want you to have your own unique plan, and that's what this helps you do, and resources like us on campus to craft that, okay? Can you promise me you'll have a plan? Because if you don't have a plan, then how do you know where you're headed, right? Like, what's the goal if you don't have a plan or a target? So we want to create that. That's different for each one of you. So the 4P model, that's a way to look at it. So we talked about this, right? And hold on to that. The sophomores are going to get this tonight. Um, I should remind you, an event, if you want to do some things in here already and meet professionals or get involved in student organizations, we have the student organizations fair tonight, as well as uh, we're bringing in alumni, 16 different alumni, doing all different kinds of things in life that you can talk to and you can ask them. How did you get to where you are? What's your daily work like? And how do you balance life? They're going to be in the Hanson Center tonight at 6 o'clock, okay? Go for it. Come. If you come at 6, there might actually be some froyo for you, okay? So that's good, all right? And then there's the biggest volleyball game of the year at 7 o'clock uh, right after. So you can cheer on the, the ladies on the volleyball court. So... You know, Anne's here, our Director of Employer Relations and Internships. Anne's awesome. If you want to talk to her, come down before you go have discussions with your small group right afterwards for a few moments. Um, but we are committed to helping you become the type of person that the world needs. Would we all agree? Raise your hand if you think the world needs more Jesus. Yeah? Like, it's a messed up world, right? Messed up, broken. We're all broken. But the world needs more Jesus. So get, ask, guess what Jesus is asking us to do? 
Let's join him in bringing him to the world and his hope, right? Let's do it. That's what we're talking about with virtue, character development. Ann and I talk to employers all the time. One of the things they tell us is we, we like Cornerstone because it's not just what your students can do and what you've trained them to be able to do professionally, but who they are as individuals, the character of you, right? So did you hear about the Virtue Project yet at Cornerstone? It's pretty cool. We'll play a video that's like a minute and 20 seconds, and then we'll talk with the upper-class students here. But look at those. Would you agree those 11 are pretty accurate for when you think of Jesus, those character traits kind of fit. Those are virtues out of our virtue project. We want to help you intentionally grow into being more Christ-like to bring Christ to the world, regardless of what you do when you graduate, okay? The one I'm working on the most probably at this point is self-discipline. That's why it's a little to the right. That was, you can <laughs> laugh about that. Actually, I tried to space it right, and it didn't work, so... Okay, let's watch it. Your time as a college student will be incredibly transformative, academically and spiritually. That's why it is so important that you invest the next four years of your life at a place that is centered on Jesus Christ and rooted in biblical virtues. At Cornerstone University, you will be intentionally guided in developing the virtues of gratitude, hospitality, self-discipline, faith, hope, love, wisdom, courage, and justice. We call this the CU Virtue Project. These virtues frame everything from university chapel services and classroom discussions to global experiences and athletics. For example, our largest tradition, Night of Nets, inspires the entire CU community to put on justice and love as we raise awareness and money to supply bed nets to our international partner in Zambia to help prevent malaria. Whether you pursue a career in education or business, ministry or mathematics, you graduate from Cornerstone with a degree and a character that more closely reflects Jesus Christ. Character matters. Check out what matters at Cornerstone University. Are you seeing some themes, right? This whole build a life that matters, be an influencer for Christ. We want to help you with that, okay? So there's tons of us in the room that could stand up here and share story, but we want to give an example of some of this stuff through um, students right here, right? So the, the remaining portion of time we have, uh, I want them to introduce themselves real quick because you probably don't, do you know everyone on the stage? Does everyone know everyone on the stage? Okay, that's going to help, right? So Camila's going to start, and then I have a few questions, and they're just going to share a little bit on how they've done this, this virtue thing but also the vocation thing, this idea of I am intentionally getting experience at Cornerstone that's going to help me prepare for the future. And it takes intentionality and effort and figuring it out and asking for help, but I'm doing it. And you'll hear that from these four, okay? That's what we want for each one of you. So Camillo, do you want to share uh, maybe three things about yourself, major, minors, um, where you're from, studying, class year, and some cool what you did last summer or something? Okay, here's the mic if you want. Um, hello, my name is Camilo Glass. I am a senior here at Cornerstone. Um, I am a business marketing major and audio production minor. Um, and last summer, I got the opportunity to intern at Billy Graham Association in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I also got the opportunity to uh, skydive. That's awesome. Hello, my name is Danny DeRozier. I am a senior. Shout out to Group 12 out here. They're great. Um, also, shout out to Timna. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am a marketing major. I said that already. I'm a senior. I said that already, too. Do I have to, what was in? What's I one cool thing they need to know about Dana? I like to fake laugh. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah, that's good. That's a talent. That didn't show up on Strengths Quest, did it? All right. Hi, guys. I'm Drew Losey. Um, I'm a senior. I'm a sports management major and a marketing minor. Um, something I did fun this summer. Um, went to my first ever Cubs game at Wrigley Field. So Ooh. that's pretty cool. I was going to mention that. He's setting the trend. That's cool now. Did you know that? I learned that this summer. That's the thing to do. Yep. 
Hi guys, I'm Melanie Van Sloten. Um, <laughs> shout out to my group, 27. You're great, Kevin the Bear. Um, yeah, I, oh, I'm a sophomore and I'm pre-med. You guys heard in the other panel. Um, I thought I would share like the calling to, uh, I would love to do medical missions for a part of my life. Um, and then uh, fun facts, I hate microphones and I hate wearing shoes. So, but I'm wearing shoes, so, <laughs> yep. Sandals, Chacos, right? Uh, Tevas. Tevas, okay, preference. <laughs> so, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to show, for example, virtues, character. So each of what you shared, maybe career goals or whatever you want to share post-graduation as a goal, right? Why does virtue character matter related to that and how you're developing into the person God wants you to be and reflecting him to what that future goal may be? Why does it matter? Someone want to take that one? <laughs> Drew has it. He, he can talk a lot. I know it. That's a good thing. All right, so um, obviously being a sports management major, I want to work in athletics in some aspect. Um, still trying to figure that out, even as a senior, what that looks like, whether that's in the professional sports world or in like an athletic department at school. Um, but yeah, um, character traits, I mean, they, they matter a lot, obviously. Um, like for me, like, he's, like he said, like I love talking with people and just... Um, you know, just sharing humor, make, making people laugh, and going with the business side of things um, with sports management, like, making connections with people is huge. Um, and, like, that's really all business is. Like, you have to find common ground with people and in order to, like, make those deals and make connections so you can um, not just help them and what they're trying to do, but also, like, progress further in your career as well. Awesome. So did you hear Drew say, help them? but doing business, right? Doing business, and happens to be in athletics, the right way, through relationship, through genuine care, right? Some of these things we saw as, as character traits of Jesus, right? Was Jesus relational? Did he care, and did he do his business the right way? I'd say, yeah, he's the best model we have for that. Anyone else want to share real quick? Character traits and why they matter to what you want to do in the future and how you serve and make impact for Christ. Um, so two that stood out to me were love and self-discipline. Yep. Um, and so love is just like a really big one. As Christians, I feel like the biggest thing we hear is love one another. Um, and so for me and wanting to be a, in a relational field, love is such a big thing because I can't just hear about someone's problems and be like, oh, cool, that sucks. But instead, I have to feel with them and have that empathy. Um, and then for the other side of it, um, just the way to get there is a lot of work. It's a lot of discipline. Um, and it's a lot of sitting down and trying to figure out how to get there. And so that takes just a lot of hard work um, and being <laughs> Disciplined, yeah, <laughs> and planning. <laughs> good, good, good. Thank you, Mel. All right, so let's transition. Does that make sense? It's the type of person you're becoming, and believe you me, people take notice, especially employers and graduate school recruiters, and it matters. It so matters. It matters more than what you can actually do, Okay. We'll train you. It's, it's up to you to learn the skills you need. We'll talk about that now. But it matters really who you are as you do these things that you're called to do, okay? And that's the virtue component, the character of Jesus. So let's transition. We're going to combine the second two. So what are some skills, abilities you are required that you need to gain while at Cornerstone to be prepared to do what you want to do? And then what experiences, maybe you combine it, experiences you've had that have helped you already get there does that make sense? Okay. Camilo, Dana, you want to start? Sorry, I'll be here. Um, can you, okay, so uh, a lot of the skills that um, I think are extremely important is um, having a really uh, strong relationship with your professors and people that are in your corner. So whether that's academic advisors, professors, or any of that um, is extremely uh, important. Also, making sure that you are 
um, using your time wisely and using resources given to you wisely, uh, making sure that you're maximizing uh, the potential and everything. Um, what was the other part of the question? So how does it prepare you it. for what you want to do, maybe uh, post-graduation? Yeah, so um, I think for post-graduation right now, I'm just kind of um, looking at maybe doing grad school, and I think that all those virtues we just talked about are going to be crucial because grad school is going to be a lot more difficult, and there's going to be a lot more, um, you know, if I want to work and do grad school, I think that's, you know, that's very important to make sure that I'm taking care of my time and making sure that I'm enabling myself to be successful. And Camila, can you share while you have the mic, what did Billy Graham experience in Charlotte, North Carolina? What did that look like for you, and what skills were required to do well at headquarters for a place that's all about Jesus? Yeah, so a lot of the skills that um, were required was that I needed to know how to um, share the gospel in many ways, whether that was through working with them on the radio stuff or just kind of like one-on-one -on -one with random people that I met. Um, another skill that's extremely important in any setting was the ability for me to um, not only network with other people, but also contribute in any way that I could and to find uh, ways to serve that. So I like always be looking for ways to serve, and that was a big uh, part of being successful and just being um, able to contribute in that big of an organization. Sure. So pick up where the picking up needed to be, right? Mm -hmm. Asking, how can I help? and stepping in to do so. Yeah, general professional skills, essentially. There's a great example, right? So employers have these general skills, uh, critical thinking, problem-solving abilities, team-oriented abilities, right? Like these, these skills that are required of anyone that graduates from college. And so Camilo had, had alluded to some of those things just this summer uh, at a place that's all about Jesus uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Good. Dana, you want to share a little bit? Yeah. So um, Camila worked at a headquarters of a place that was all about Jesus, and it was pretty big. That was his internship. And I had an internship at an advertising agency called McCann World Group in New York City, and that was the headquarters of their, their entire company. I guess they have 120 different offices. And that place was not all about Jesus. And so, it was, so like I have to think about who I want to become like when I go into advertising, because it's like, I'm trying to, I, I want to go into a lucrative field, and I learned from an, a meeting with Jason that, like, that's okay to have that, you know, goal. Um, <laughs> so I have to have certain skills and know that, like, like, because advertising is, like, a deceptive business, basically. I have to have integrity. I have to, you know, practice honesty, and I have to be all about people and just, like, I don't know. That's just something we have to learn here. We listen to our professors. Um, what did they say? A lot, didn't they? A lot. A lot. I'm distracted, too, because my group of peers is trying to take Snapchats of me, and Megan's flash just went off, so thank you. No <laughs> flashes in question. <Christ> <laughs> um, also, Camilo said to... Uh, connect with your professors. I had a professor at my old school I transferred from whose name's Steve K. He made the uh, Got Milk campaign and fudge covered Oreos. Great guy. And so like Some good he, stuff. he, yeah, he was amazing. And so like I tried to become buddy buddy with him and like that was good and he hired me as company to be a marketing assistant. It was like he's like old now and so his company just like sort of like wasn't relevant anymore because didn't keep up with technology and so that was like my job to like try to get it back out there and then I moved here which is cool but yeah so there's a lot of I don't remember what it was. that's that's great experiences right with experiences. Steve and others that are intentional so how do we do does this does what's also on the screen did we just hear great examples of that why it matters yeah thumbs up thumbs up we did all right good let's give these four, four folks a round of applause And I think we're going to wrap up. Shannon's going to come back up and share some closing comments before you have discussion groups with your Terra Firma leaders, okay? But I want to close with this. It matters. The time, the gift you have of Cornerstone time, it matters. I'll keep preaching that. When I work with each and every one of you, please, please 
make the most of it, steward it well, because God calls us to that. And you heard from four individuals, they've been in New York City to pre-med and working at Spectrum Health right now to get more experience to be a great candidate for med school in Mel, right? And Drew, I mean, working really hard in athletics here and being a building supervisor, right, of the Hanson Center, which is a big facility. Does that make sense? Like they're getting intentional experiences and working hard at it to gain the skills needed while learning how to just live into who Jesus has called them to be, to bring Jesus to wherever they go next. And because of the skills experiences they are getting here and now and making sense of in and outside of the classroom, it's going to make them a great candidate for what lies ahead. Does that make sense? So, we have how many years now? We're going to graduate 2021, 20, right? That's less than four years. You can do all those things and more that they shared, but do what's right for you, and we can help you figure that out, okay, through the life path process. So it's good to be with you again. Um, have a great semester and know where we are tonight. The event in Hanson Center, 6 o'clock. Network with alumni. Meet people as they shared. It matters relationally who you meet to help you. Maybe you find a mentor in the process. Thanks for letting us be with you today. All right. As we are um, wrapping up here, we'll head to discussion groups in just a couple of minutes. But uh, I do want to talk about homework for a minute. We have our next assignment coming up here. Um, so... Um, I was quickly scanning the Dropbox. The vast majority of you figured out Focus 2, figured out how to upload your strengths, and a lot of you um, have that all squared away. Looks like some of you might still be uh, a little bit struggling with that, so just know that Dropbox will remain open and you can still upload those assignments. Um, but in addition to last week's assignment to upload your strengths results and your Focus 2 results, this week we're asking you to build on that. So start very much, start this process that these guys were just talking about here today and start thinking about these Focus 2 results, these strengths results. What are some early steps and thought processes I need to be having even now in my third week of college to get me to the point where someday I can be one of these students up here on this stage? Okay, so there is an assignment. It's already all, already all loaded into Moodle. So you'll just need to go um, click into the assignment. It's set up like a Moodle quiz. So you'll just answer the questions, type the responses right into Moodle, just as though you, maybe you've taken a quiz in a class on Moodle, maybe already by now. Um, so there's nothing you have to type, nothing you have to upload. Um, I mean, nothing you have to type separately. You'll need to type your results, again, into the Moodle format. But you won't have to save any documents or upload anything. Just answer the questions straight there in Moodle, and then they'll get graded from there. So um, again, that's due by next Wednesday at the beginning of class. So you'll want to spend some time on that this week as you um, review your results from the last couple assignments and then move forward into this new life path experience. Does anyone have questions at this point about um, a homework assignment? Again, you should find that right in the top um, folder on Moodle. Um, it's like the third thing down or something like that. It says Life Path Assignment. So click there and, and go right into the quiz assignment. Any other questions? I know a few of you have emails into me. We'll work through some of those issues with Focus 2. So if you sent me an email, I'll get back to you on it. Um, and we'll get a few of those glitches worked out. Um, but always be sure to let me know if you are having trouble with that process. So, okay, um, let's break into discussion groups. Leaders, the discussion questions are up here in the front on the speakers, so you can grab those. Again, please stay in the building so that we can kind of check in on you all as we're getting started. And again, we have about 20 minutes until the end of class, so spend good quality discussion time.